Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. When people think of islands that make up the United Kingdom slash British Isles slash whatever you want to call this part of the world, two in particular normally come to mind, those being the islands of Great Britain and the island of Ireland. But thinking that the UK is made of just these two islands would be a huge disservice. There are many smaller islands that make up this nation too. And yes, while there are more far-flung island territories of the UK like the Falklands and such, I want to talk about the islands that are a little closer to home. Wikipedia lists that there are no less than 189 permanently inhabited islands across the British Isles, and these islands come in all different shapes, sizes, and statuses. Some of these islands house entire cities and settlements, while others are home to just a handful of people. And while most of these islands are just seen as being a part of one of the other UK's home nations, some get more sovereignty, as you will see. And while a handful of these islands are just on their own or in a pair with another island, a lot of these islands are parts of archipelagos that make their home off the coast of Britain, most noticeably up in Scotland. And more often than not, it's actually near these archipelagos that are more well known than the names of the islands themselves. E.g. I'm sure you've heard the name Shetland, but Muckle Row isn't as well known. So today, let's look into these far-flung corners of the British Isles, away from the hustle and bustle of the nation's cities, and examine in greater detail these islands that while to many of us might seem alien, to many of us they are home. We shall look into the names of the most well-known of these islands, and some of the lesser known but interestingly named ones. And this video will be focusing on primarily the islands around the island of Great Britain. While Ireland might seem a little underrepresented in this video, there's a reason for that. While it does have islands around its coast, it seems most of them belong to the nation of Ireland as opposed to Northern Ireland. Perhaps one day we'll do a video about the islands of Ireland. Anyway, let's start things off with those islands that aren't part of archipelagos and are more standalone or in a pair. And to start with, we have an island somewhat close to home for myself, the Isle of Wight. Located in the south of the nation, this island has been a tourist destination for years. Even the Beatles referenced it in one of their songs. The name has nothing to do with the colour white, they're even spelt differently. There's two ideas as to where the name may come from. One idea is that it came from the Beaker people, an ancient race who have their name due to the beaker shaped cups they invented. They supposedly called the island Wit meaning rays as the island rises over the sea, while the other idea is it was the Iron Age Celts who gave the island this name, and it means place of division, as the island divides the Solent Strait. Two islands pretty close to the Isle of Wight are Portsea and Hailing Island. Portsea Island is actually the third most populated island in the entire British Isles, just behind Great Britain and Ireland. This is because the island is home to the city of Portsmouth. Portsea might sound like a pretty obvious name, and it kind of is. It's a combination of the Latin portus meaning harbour slash port, and the Saxon ig meaning island, so its name was Portus Ig. Over time, these two words got combined to Portsug, and as the Saxon word Ig lost its meaning, it was corrupted into Port Sea. I guess people called it this as it was so close to the sea. Hailing Island seems to have a pretty touristy feel to it too, like the Isle of Wight. The name is apparently Saxon and means Hegel's people, though who Hegel's people were we aren't too sure. I imagine Hegel was some sort of tribe leader. I doubt it has anything to do with the German philosopher George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Over in Wales, however, in the north west of the home nation we have the islands of Anglesey and Holy Island. Anglesey is actually one of the larger islands off the coast of Britain and is the largest in Wales. It is known for its coast and villages but to us here on Name Explain, it is known for one village in particular. You know the one. The name Anglesey is very much like the aforementioned Hailing Island name as it's thought to be of Norse origin initially being Ongolas Island. The who Ongolas we have no idea. Of course as this land is in Wales it has a Welsh name too, that being Ernest Mon. And while we know this comes from the Roman name for the island Mona, beyond that we aren't 100% sure as to where this name comes from. And as for Holy Island, well, this name unsurprisingly comes from how many religious sites have been found on this tiny island. From the west of Britain to the east, over in Essex we have the oddly named Foundless Island, which is a really fitting name depending on your thoughts on Essex. I have never been to Essex or this island myself, but from what I can read, it apparently has wonderful natural sites, but is used extensively by the MOD as a testing site for military weapons. This juxtaposition of natural beauty and military testing makes Foundless sound like a rather unique place, that's for sure. The name doesn't, however, relate to how un pleasant or well foul the island is. The name is thought to come from Old English and is believed to mean bird's headland. Name this due to the amount of birds and waterfowl that make this island their home. And over in Northern Ireland, we have Rathlin Island. While it is an Irish island, as it's so neatly between Ireland and Scotland, it's actually become a point of contention between the two nations as to who owns it. It seems this island was known to the Romans too, as we know of their Latin name for it too, Lugania. The name is ultimately thought to come from Celtic root, meaning to saw slash cut into pieces, perhaps referencing how the island may have been seen as being a part of an island that had been sawn off. 
Let's move away from these standalone islands and look more into the many archipelagos or islands that grace these seas, starting off all the way in the south of the Isles of Scilly. These islands are just off the coast from Cornwall and are seen as the southernmost point of the United Kingdom. We aren't sure however as to how exactly this name came about. There are a few popular reasons however. One idea is that it might come from Sulis, the name of a Celtic goddess who is related somewhat to the sun. So it makes sense as I imagine due to its southern location, the Isles of Scilly are probably warmer than the rest of the UK. Another idea idea is that it comes from the Roman Silinia, meaning place slash island of, possibly due to it being a Roman pilgrimage spot. And the third idea is that it could be a corruption of its old name of Solingus, which is thought to mean salt fish, which again makes sense with it being an island in the sea surrounded by fish. Some of the more populated islands of Scilly simply have saint names, e.g. St. Mary's, St. Martin's and St. Agnes. We see names like this all across the globe, from Russian cities to Caribbean island nations, so it's no surprise to see it here too. However, two islands in Scilly with more unique names are Tresco and Bryher. Tresco has a population of just under 200, so it's a really small place. However, it seems very picturesque. The name Tresco comes from the Cornish language and means Island of Elder Trees, which doesn't relate to geriatric trees but rather elderberries, which grew on the land. And as far for the name Bryher, it seems to come from Cornish too, simply meaning place of hills. What I also read about this, however, is that the name of this island is becoming a popular given name for girls too. Let me know if there's any Briars watching this video. Finally, it's time to move up to Scotland, which houses many of the UK's islands and archipelagos. Across the west of Scotland, we have the Hebrides. These dramatic islands are home to amazing scenery and wildlife not seen in other parts of the nation. There are so many Hebrides, however, they actually make up two archipelagos, the Inner and Outer Hebrides. The Inner are the ones closer to the mainland and the Outer are further, of course. This is a seriously ancient name and we don't seem to be too sure as to where it actually comes from. We don't have the older name of Ebude and Hebudus, but beyond that, we aren't sure. One idea is that it may relate to an old word for horses, so the name may relate to the animal. The largest and most populated island of the Inner Hebrides is the Isle of Skye. This island is hugely popular with tourists who want a more adventurous holiday. The name does actually relate to the actual sky. Well, kind of. It's believed to come from Norse origins and mean cloud island, due to how misty it can get at times, as if the island was surrounded by clouds in the sky. The Inner Hebrides is also the Isle of Mala too. From what I could find, it seems that Mala is a word of Gaelic origins, which means things are on the lines of bare and empty. Perhaps this island was seen as being bare and empty. There's also the Isle of Jura in the Inner Hebrides too. There's two ideas as to how this name came about. The more accepted one is that it means deer island in Old Norse, relating to the animals on the island. But the other idea is that it means other island, due to the shape of some mountains on the island. And what they reminded some people of. And the most westerly of the Inner Hebrides is called Tyree, which is believed to mean a land of corn, due to the fact that corn was grown there. In the Outer Hebrides with the island of Lewis and Harris, which is actually the third largest island in the British Isles behind Great Britain and Ireland. Now, why on earth did this island have given names for two people as its own name? Well, it seems that Lewis and Harris are just the older names for parts of this island corrupted to make them easier to pronounce and understand. Lewis is thought to come from Gaelic roots, possibly meaning things like marshy or songhouse, while Harris is thought to possibly come from Old Norse, meaning higher, as it's the more hilly part of the island. The Outer Hebrides also has the island of Bembecula too, which is thought to mean mountain or forts in relation to the geographic features on the island. Off the northern coast of Scotland are the Orkney Islands. This name is seen as being Norse too and is thought to mean seal islands, due to the seals that make the island and its waters their home. However, another idea is that the name means Isle of Orcs in Old Irish Gaelic. Not that kind of orc, however. Apparently here, orc means young pigs, so that's a lot cuter than the other kind of orc. The main island of Orkney goes by a few names. Some just call it Orkney too, or others call it the mainland, as is the main island of the archipelago. However, another name for it is Horsi, meaning horse island. Island, once again for the animals that live there. The Orkney Islands are also home to the islands of Hoi, which means High Island, and Sande, which means Sand Island, so it seems that there are many somewhat literal names here. And even further north than the Orkney Islands we have the Shetland Islands, which of course are most well known for their pony breed. One theory as to how this name came about is it coming from the Norse name of the island, which translates into meaning hilt land, as in the hilt of a sword. This is thought to be because they thought the main island of Shetland, also known as Shetland, looks like the hilt of a sword which I can kind of see I guess. The Shetlands are also home to the islands of Papastor, meaning Big Island of the Celtic Monks, Wadasay, meaning Whale Island, and Muckle Row, meaning Big Red Island. 
But let's go back a bit further south however and look into the three islands which are a bit more unique. These are the Crown Dependencies of the Isle of Man, Jersey and Guernsey. What does it mean to be a Crown Dependency? Well according to the Royal Family site itself it means that these islands are self-governing but they're under the possession of the British Crown. I've actually been to one of these a few times myself, the Isle of Man. And while it does have similarities to the rest of the UK, they do have their own passports, government and variation of the pound. The Isle of Man is a wonderful island of amazing sites of nature and a feeling of a past time. Thomas's Isle of Sodor was actually based on the Isle of Man, so that should give you an idea as to what it's like there. The name is popularly believed to come from the name of the Celtic god Mananan, who plays a large role in the island's mythology. The other two crown dependencies are far more south, in fact they are closer to France than the UK. These are the islands of Jersey and Guernsey, which are also known as the Channel Islands. Jersey is the larger of the two islands, in size and population. In regards to this name, I see many ideas as to how it came about. Though the popular myth of its origin is it derives from the Latin Caesarea, which means Caesar's Island. While its etymology has been discredited, the story remains popular. Jersey of course also gave its name to a type of top that was worn by fishermen on the island to keep water Warm, which eventually went on to be the name for other tops too. And New Jersey in the USA was named after this Jersey too. And as for the name Guernsey, this is thought to simply mean Green Island, due to the natural landscape. And finally, I'd like to talk about an island not in the seas of Britain, but in one of Britain's most famous rivers, the Thames. This is of course Eel Pie Island. This odd little island in Greater London has this odd name due to a pub that many, many years ago supposedly sold an eel pie so popular, people from all over would travel to try them. These pies were so nice that they left their mark on the name of this island of the United Kingdom. The islands of the UK were suggested by Kevin Iger, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as name explains patron saint of the islands of the UK. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a name explained video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just $1 a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patreon is vital to Name Explain, and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at NameExplainYT. On Instagram, I'm also NameExplainYT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.